Okay, had a question from a viewer um, about trying to find the the cause of an intermittent channel on a turntable, so a channel that drops out. So what I thought I would do is I'm working on this PL530. This has an intermittent issue with one of the channels. Um, so I want to take the opportunity to kind of go through some basic steps, some things that I do, some things you have to consider when you're doing it. This will be a standalone video, plus it will be rolled into the PL530 um, either series or the, or the video that I release. That video won't come out. The PL530 video won't come out until early to mid-March. This is like the 23rd of uh, January. Uh, so I'll release this segment of it early just for that, uh, for that viewer and um, to answer their question. So here's the problem. I have an intermittent channel, uh, drops in and out, and I don't know if it's the RCA cable, right? Or, or maybe a better question is what could cause that problem, right? That's, that's a better way to approach it. So if you think about it, we have to go from these cables, right? Or actually we go from the stylus on the cartridge, right? through the, so we have the stylus, the cartridge, the head shell wires, the connectors on the tone arm, the tone arm wires, where they connect underneath. Um, sometimes there's a muting switch, right? Uh, and then basically the other end of that connection are the RCA cables. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a multimeter and I'm going to set it to measure resistance, right, so ohms. And then, I don't know if you can see that, there's a little tiny, see, right, there's, there's a little tiny, like, uh, a sound or speaker or audible symbol right there. What that means is if I have connectivity between the two probes, it'll beep, right? So what I'm looking for, if I'm tracing from, um, the head shell to the RCA cables is I want to hear that beep. Now, some turntables have a muting circuit, right? So if there's a muting circuit, then you may not be able to perform all of the tests. You'll have to, you know, kind of perform them in stages or in steps. But what I'm going to do is this, so not knowing anything about this turntable, let's just see what I can actually make happen. So here's the head shell. Right, so I will take my clip, and I'm going to do the right channel first. So I'm going to take my clip, and on the head shell, you'll see wires that are colored white, blue, red, and green. Red and green are the right channel. Um, white and blue are the left channel, right? So red is, let's say, right positive, and white is left positive. And then blue is left negative, and green is right negative. So I'm going to take my, my clip. Hopefully you have a little mini grabber like this and I'm going to put it right on where the red lead is onto the cartridge. Now, if I have a problem with my cartridge, I may get connectivity all the way to the end of the RCA cable and it's a bad cartridge, right? Because this is only testing from where I connect to the cartridge right through to the end of the RCA cable. So now I'm going to plug my head shell back in and I'm going to take the other end Right, the other end, the other probe, and I'm going to, on the red RCA cable, I'm going to touch the middle post. Now, if there's no muting circuit, right, or even if there is a muting circuit, if it's not um, actively muting the, the circuit, right, I should get a beep, right, so I get a beep on right. Now, if I have an intermittent, intermittent problem, and this probe is a little bit too small. I do have another type of probe that'll work a little bit better for this. So let me just swap that out real quick. And I'm gonna get and put my, instead of my mini grabber, I'm going to use my, my alligator clip because this will stay on the end of that a little bit better. So going to the right positive. Now if I have what I believe is like a, a suspect 
like a break in the cable or something, I can actually move the cable around and see if I lose my signal. Notice how I can, I can bend this and flex this, and that noise is pretty annoying and I don't lose the signal, okay? So I'm reasonably sure that I've got, right, a good connection from the head shell all the way to the RCA cable. Now, what I'll do next is, I'll go and I'll connect the red mini grabber to the white cartridge wire. Plug my head shell back in. And I'm going to do the same test, but I'm going to use the white wire. Right? I'm going to go to the post on the, on the white wire. Right? And I'm going to flex this. I'm going to bend it around. I'm going to see if I can influence, right, some kind of break in there. And I don't have one. Right? Now, this 530, and I want to explain this. I was, I was having an intermittent uh, channel go out, but the way I have to test these connected to the stereo I have in my garage, basically I'm using connectors like this to extend an RCA cable, and these things are kind of shoddy. So, um, right? so it, it appears as though I have good connectivity between the head shell right, and the end of my RCA cables. Now, at, at least the positive ends. Now, I can do the same test with negative. So let me go and put my mini grabber on green. And plug the head shell back in. And now I can still use my alligator clip, but instead of touching the middle post, right, I'm gonna touch the outer, the outer post, right, and see if I have connectivity. So it's good on the right channel. And I'll do the same with left if I can get around the blue, the blue cable on the head shell. This one might be a little tricky. I may have to come at it this way. I'll just have to go straight out the side. Like so. And now again, I'll take my alligator clip, I'll touch, right, and I have connectivity on the left channel. So what happens if, what happens if I have a bad connection in the head shell? What? Now you'll, you'll hear how there's no longer a beat. So you can also have issues with these four posts at the end of the head shell. So if there's any oxidation, tarnish on these, or, and it's, I can't really show it to you very well, but on the inside of the tone arm um, connector, you have four pads that correspond to these four posts. So if, if these are tarnished, corroded, or if these are tarnished to corroded, right, you'll have an intermittent connectivity issue with the head shell. Right, so you want to take some contact cleaner, some rubbing alcohol, something like that, a, a cotton swab. Oh, that's annoying. And make sure that those are clean. All right, so actually I'm going to remove the head shell because now we're going to... Let's say one of those channels was bad. Let's say I didn't have any connectivity. Uh, let's choose a channel. Let's say the right channel I had no connectivity. So what... I would test to see where the break is. And I'll have to get my turntable turntable here. I can do the same tests and I will connect I just put my head shell down and I don't know where it is. Oh, here it is. So I'm, I'm going to run the, the same test. I'm just going to use the right channel though as an example. So I'm going to put my mini grabber on the red. Right? I'm going to put the head shell back in. Actually, I'm going to do the white just because of the orientation of the table. So, and I'm going to put my head shell back in. And so let's say left channel, I had no, I, I didn't get a beep. There was no continuity, right? What I would then do is I would trace from the white, right, to 
where the Y connects on uh, there's typically a board underneath. Sometimes it goes directly to the tone arm wires themselves. In this case, on the 530, there's this little. Oh man, that's not gonna. You got to be really careful with these screws because they are very soft and they don't like to. See, like that one, it just wants to strip that screw. All right, so I'll, I'll try to I'll try to get to them. Um, I don't know that I'm gonna have much success getting to those wires there, but here are where the RCA cable wires terminate. See these posts? It's red, green, blue, and white. So I can take my probe, and remember, the mini grabber is connected to the white on the head shell and I can take the other end of my mini grabber or the other end of the right the multimeter and touch white and I'll get a beep right I don't get a beep on red now I will get a beep sometimes on the ground for that channel which is normal right as I showed showed you earlier so that tells me that the RCA cables are connected to this board now unfortunately And it always happens like this. Unfortunately, I don't want to strip the screw, so I'm going to have to mar it up a little bit and remove it using my vice grips, which was not a part of the plan. Gotta love it when a plan comes together. I may have to use my smaller vice grip. Sometimes these, the long ones don't really lock in position very well. But I need to remove this cover so I can show you Just loosen it up a little bit and again this is only how the Pioneer PL530 works uh, every turntable is going to be different right but I'll remove this shroud so here's the board where the RCA bill the RCA cables come in red green blue and white and now I can take again my alligator clip and I can just start moving kind of kind of down so that was so now I'm coming from the white on the head shell to the white on the board, right? So I'm, I already know I have a connection there because I tested the RCA cable, which I really shouldn't have done. Um, but one end of the multimeter is connected to the white wire on the head shell. This is where the white wire connects to the board. So I get connectivity, continuity. Here's where it leaves the board, right? It leaves the board to the end of the RCA cable. And then here is where it terminates at the end of the RCA cable. Now, if there's a muting circuit involved, right? Um, uh, muting circuit on this one. I'm just looking to see. Okay, the muting circuit on this one, there are these two long, uh, metal fingers that that are like this so they'll make contact right and it's either when they're contacted the circuits muted or when they're open the circuits muted it just it kind of depends but you also sometimes you have to make sure those contacts are clean because where they contact if they're tarnished or corroded you may have to clean those contacts as well now again this one I'd kind of have to disassemble this to get to it, and I really don't want to because I really don't need to um, and I just had a screw go flying somewhere that I'll have to track down, right? But that's how you can trace kind of a broken signal path, if you want to look at it that way, a broken signal path from the end of the, an RCA cable all the way to the head shell. And then again, if, if you have a break, you can kind of take it in pieces. So can I go from the end of the RCA cable to where it connects to the board, right? If I can't, but I have connectivity from this point to the end of the head shell, then I know my problems with the RCA cable, right? If I can, if I get a, a, a signal from here to where the RCA cable connects to this board, but I don't get a signal from where the white wire leaves the board to the head shell, then I, that tells me I may have a broken uh, tone arm wire or there's an issue 
with the head shell wires, right? Because I've also had issues where the head shell wire, these head shell wires will break. So they're just soldered on, right, to the little clips, and these will break as well, and they'll just snap, right? So sometimes, I mean, you can kind of see where, <laughs> you know, if, okay, I don't have a channel, well, it can be this wire's broken. It can be, there's an issue with this connector here, right? Um, these could be tarnished. The other end where the tone arm pads connect to this, those can be tarnished. The wires inside of the tone arm, could, a wire could be broken. One of these could be disconnected or broken, right? Where they feed into either a board or where they connect directly to the RCA cables. You could have a break in the RCA cable. You could have one of these come loose. You could have one of these, right? A wire break in one of the heads or, or one of the wires, right? So lots of potential um, issues, right? Or causes of an issue uh, in terms of a, a channel being out, right? So it's, it's not always just an RCA cable or a bad head shell wire, right? It can be really anything in this path, including a muting circuit. So anyway, hopefully this was useful. Again, I'm going to go back into, actually, I won't have to put this in my PL530 video because um, I think it was just my connection here that was the issue because running through this video, you know, I'm, f I'm pretty certain that I don't have an, an issue with the 530. So I'm going to run this through a different phono input on a different receiver and just confirm that everything is working. So anyway, um, yep, if you have comments or questions, things that I missed, please put some of those in the comment sections below. And um, I'll catch you in the next video.